friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where today we'll be doing my TBR takedown for the month of April. That's the month we're in, April. If you are new here, the TBR takedown is a game I've been playing trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from a really high number down to something more manageable. This year I've added in some new rules, some new regulations, and I think we're doing pretty good so far. I did do some recalculating after the last video because I think at the end of the video, I don't remember if it was what I like what I said out loud was my current TBR um, or what was on the screen. They were different. One was 26, one was 28. I don't know which was which. And I was like, the best way to solve this is to actually count what is actually on my physical TBR at the beginning of April and that way I would know for sure where our starting number was. So I technically have two TBR shelves. One is my backlist, so everything that I had prior to January 1 of this year, and then my current TBR shelf is everything from January on. Mostly we're focusing on getting rid of the backlist TBR, not the current TBR, but I don't want the current TBR to get too crazy. We've been keeping track of this on the screen so that you can kind of follow along with me. Uh, I don't want to make it too difficult for you. But it can be a little difficult to follow along so um, we'll have numbers on the screen I'll slide over here also no I don't have shelves up yet this is the other side of the room this is my TBR shelf um, and this behind this tapestry is my television um, but it's shiny and you don't need to see that so where we are starting in April we are starting with 64 books on my backlist TBR with a goal of 59 by the end of the month. And my current TBR is starting in April at 29. Don't know where I got 26, don't know where I got 28, but I've done the actual legitimate math, counted them physically on the shelf, and it's 29, so that's what we're going with. Sometimes I do this in a chronological order, and other times you just get each individual thing. There's a lot in one of these sections, so we're just going by sections today. So we're gonna start off with books that I hauled this month, and the first of which is The Severed and the Hunted by Becca C. Smith. This is Hexfear Chronicles book one. If you don't know, Becca is a fellow author tuber and I will link her in the description box down below. She's also a friend of mine. And so I purchased this book and I'm just going to read the uh, flat copy for you. Magic is real. Those immune to its effects, known as discons, are considered extremely dangerous threats to society. They are hunted down and killed by an elite terrorist organization known only as Trackers. Ella is a discon. She's spent her entire life trying to hide and fool the world around her pretending she has magic. But when a tracker finally discovers what she truly is, Ella knows she has to take action, but she needs help. And there's no one more motivated than Ren. Her mother was also a discon murdered by trackers. Ever since that day, Ren's mission has been to kill every last one of them. When she discovers Ella and her similarities to her mother, the two girls join forces vowing to take down the trackers at any cost. First off, she's a beauty. So hopefully I get to pick this one up soon. Um, I say I get to as if like anyone is in control of it but me. Um, but I'm very excited to get to this one because I have loved Becca's books in the past. And the only other book that we have to haul this month because I did not have a huge haul month this month is The Fun Booth at the Edge of the World by Laura and my Messina. This is for the Wheatberry Books book club pick for my local bookstores book club if that is not enough words for you. We are doing translated novels this year. This one was translated from Italian. It is in some ways inspired by Japan's real life wind phone, which is essentially this phone booth at the base of a mountain, I think, where um, it's not actually connected to anything, but people will go there to talk to their loved ones who have passed away. I'm sure this book's probably gonna make me cry, and then we can all laugh about it at book club, uh, at me for crying, not at the book. The next section that we have is our DNF and unhaul section and she be quite large this month. There are four arcs that I DNF this month. The first is Witchy Coffee. I've had that one on my arc shelf for like three years. I've read the first chapter and I've never been interested enough to pick it back up. Also Fireborn, been on my shelves for several years, never been interested to pick it up again. 
Um, I've read the first chapter. A Cosmic Kind of Love by Samantha Young. I started reading this one. I read probably about five to ten percent of it and I was really not happy with the miscommunication slash just the kind of lying going on between our two main characters and so I decided that I probably would just be very angry with the romance if I continued to read on so I bounced on that one and then the last was on writing and writers which is by C.S. Lewis and I thought that it was going to be more of like an actual book written in a way that was in my opinion helpful but really it's just like I mean it does say it's a miscellany of advice but it's like short snippets of things that he's published over the years just like things he's said in interviews or in like notes or in published works um for like self-help kind of stuff and most of it was like maybe a paragraph maybe two and so for me it was never really enough of a fully thought out thought for it to be helpful to me. Um, I read probably the first 10 to 15 percent of it and I retained absolutely nothing and then kind of just kind of skimmed through and was like the whole thing is like this and so I decided that, that was not going to be helpful for me in any way so I dnf that. We then have physical books. My book that I had to read this month that I pulled from my TBR jar was Ruined by Amy Tintera. I started reading this. I read the first chapter and then a little bit of the second chapter and I decided to DNF this. This is excruciatingly similar to Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, which I loved, but I loved the first book, didn't really like the second book, hated the third book, never picked up the fourth or fifth. Reading this just brought back that anger that I have at loving something so much and then not loving the rest of it. And that I was like, you know, if you read this, you're just gonna carry over all of that anger with you and you're not gonna like it. Also, I just get mad when things are so fucking similar. I'm sorry, I do, which is hilarious for me to say because me and Emmy have very similar books, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. I would not recommend that someone read both of our books because they would be like, this is the same book. So do I think that Amy Tintera or Victoria Aveyard read one another's books and was like, haha, I'm just gonna write this whole thing in my own way and it'll be better. No, I don't think that because I know it's completely possible for two people to write a very similar book or a very similar story without having read each other's works before because I've done it. Um, but because I'm DNFing that, I also will be unhauling the other two books in the series which are Allied and Avenged because if I'm not reading the first book, I'm sure as hell not gonna read the other two. I was wrong. Ruined is not what I picked from the TBR jar this month. Ash Princess is what I picked from the TBR jar this month. But same thing. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember why I decided to DNF this. I started reading it and was just not interested. I think a lot of it probably is just these YA fantasies that are like so entrenched in royalty and like hidden royals is just not my thing anymore. Um, so I DNF this and then because I DNF that I will be unhauling Lady Smoke because I'm not going to read the sequel if I have not read the first book. That would be stupid. I also DNF'd this month The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I started reading this. I got really bad vibes from the main character's obsession with her ex-best friend and I was like this is going to be a very creepy read and I don't know how I feel about that and so then I read a few more reviews and decided that this was definitely not the book for me. Um, I I linked a spoiler review in my review on Goodreads and that will be linked down below as will anything that I have a review for. But there is a link for the spoiler review that I read that made me decide that this was not a book for me based off of like trigger warnings and content warnings. Um, this is not at all what I thought it was. I thought it was just going to be like these people in a secluded writing retreat where people are being murdered and there would just be like a mystery of who was doing the killing and while that is true there was a lot of other really weird freaky shit happening that I was just not okay with. And so I'm glad that I was able to put this down and not continue reading it. I'm sad that it's not what I thought it was going to be, um, but I was afraid that I was just going to read this and give it a one star. And I feel like it's not conducive to me or to you for me to read a whole book and hate it and be like one star. Whereas I can just say I know that it's not going to be a book for me and we can move on. Also when hauling this month, The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken and therefore The Darkest Legacy by Alexander Bracken. I read the first chapter of The Darkest Minds a while ago and I did like the first chapter but again I have really not been enjoying YA at this point and I also have read another book by Alexander Bracken that I did not love. So while I love Alexander Bracken as a person, 
I mean, what I know of her, she sounds fantastic. This was not my favorite thing. Um, I reread the first chapter and was like, you're probably a little old for this. I'm 35. I'm not the demographic for this. So I'm going to pass these on and maybe one of the kids at the library will pick it up and enjoy it. Something I am in the age demographic for but just am not interested in anymore is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. While I did read the first chapter of this and I did like it, I don't think this is a book that I'm going to enjoy. For some reason, I just, there's something about like the royal and the political part of it and just not being what I'm looking for at this current moment in my reading world. Um, if I ever want to pick this up, I'm sure I can pick it up from the library or something, but it's just not, I don't think I'm ever going to pick it up. I've had the opportunity, I've read the first chapter, I've had every opportunity to pick this up and I just haven't. And so she's gonna go. Also leaving is a nonfiction, which is Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. I actually got this for my local book club's nonfiction book club prior to the pandemic and I have not read it yet. Also this was a book club pick for, or was it a movie watch with Beautifully Books? I don't remember. We did a movie watch of this um, with someone at some time and I have watched the movie and while I know that there's obviously more in the book than there was in the movie, I do think the movie gave me the grasp of the concept of the story and therefore I'm never going to pick this up. Had I read it before I watched the movie, I probably would have enjoyed it, but because I've seen the movie, I'm never going to pick this up. And the other two, you 100% expected because we talked about it last month that it was a possibility that it was going to happen. And that is Red Scholar's Wake and mm, Song of Silver Flame Like Night. It's a long title. These are two books that I got from Illumicrate. They are gorgeous, fantastic editions. They are still wrapped in plastic. I haven't decided if I'm going to sell these ones or if I'm going to just go ahead and put them in the pile for donations. They are both YA and I, they are about topics that I'm just not really interested in at the time and because they are gorgeous special editions I would rather put them in the hands of someone who has enjoyed the story. And now we can talk about the books that I read this month. First we have Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. I will not be rating these or reviewing these. That will be in the review video. That'll be linked down below because it usually goes up before this. The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien which comes off of the Backlist TBR. Go me. The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. The Wall by Marlon Haushofer. The Ballad of Mulan which is technically just like an old poem from uh, Japanese mythology but I read four versions of it this month so I'm counting it. Spellbound by F.T. Lukens which was an arc that I had. Witchlings by Clarabel A. Ortega which was a reread because the second book comes out this Tuesday and I wanted to be refreshed on the only book that I read last year that got a 5.25 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I snuck in right at the tail end of the month and I have no idea how I read this in a day Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. Yeah I read this in 24 hours. Don't know how, don't know why, um, but it was a thing that I did. <laughs> I should be clear the last like 200 pages of this like this part here is all appendices and I did not read those but I don't care it's done I'm done with it and this also came off of the backlist TBR so if I counted my numbers correctly which we all know I am loath to do my backlist TBR should be at 53 which my goal was 59 so I definitely crushed it and my current TBR is at 25 Sounds right. Yeah, because 29 minus 6 is 23 plus 2 is 25. So 25 for the current TBR. So the only thing left to do is to do the TBR jar and see what fun thing I get to read next month. As I said earlier, The Ash Princess was the one that I had to read or unhaul and I didn't read it and I am unhauling it but that was um, because I chose to unhaul it not because I didn't get to it. Some of these are going to be more fun than others because some are involved in reading vlogs and if I pull them out then I have to read them and do the reading vlog at the time and we all know I suck at reading vlogs. Um, I've got a bunch of little shrimp in here and we're just gonna pull it out and see what we end up with. Get this one. Okay we can do that. It is this Savage Song by B.E. Schwab right here. So this is what we'll be reading in May or unhauling. Uh, I can tell you already that we will not be unhauling any books next month for the takedown rules because I'm at 53 and next month's challenge was 55 so I'm already there. We may end up unhauling this guy or anything else that I pick up and decide that I don't want to read. So as you know I like to DNF all of the things and unhaul all of the things um, for absolutely no reason other than just I feel like it. If you've made it this far in the video leave me a teapot emoji down below in the comments. If there's not a teapot cup of tea? Cup of coffee? I'm sure there's a coffee or a tea or something. Leave it down below so that I know you made it here. 
that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and player related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss what I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!